I'd like to first uh, welcome all of our um, folks here today to this very important hearing. We've, uh, we've got a lot to discuss. We'll try to keep it uh, from the member standpoint as brief as we possibly can because of our expert witnesses that we have today, and we look forward to your testimony. And I, again, thank you for uh, your travels here today and, uh, and your travel safe home tomorrow. Um, we're here to, exa to examine the issues of second-generation renewable fuels and the opportunities for small businesses. At a time when our country is paying $4 a gallon for gasoline, it is critical that we continue the development of alternative energy supplies to help reduce prices and our independence on foreign oil. While this may not be the only answer of our challenges, entrepreneurs have been instrumental in developing these new and affordable energies. Renewable energies hold the potential to have an enormous impact on domestic fuel supplies, rural economics, and small businesses. In an industry driven by small businesses, growth and renewable fuels have been a win-win for the U.S. economy. Today's hearing will focus on the next generation of biofuels. The ad advancement of corn-based ethanol is a step in the right direction, but it carries a great consequence, mostly due to its low efficiency. Because of this, we must continue to produce toward more advanced and sustainable models for biofuels productions. Currently, renewable energy producers are investing in researches and new technologies that will enable pr pr production of both cellulosic ethanol as well as biodiesel from alternative sources. This means that ethanol will be produced not only from corn, but from wood chips, corn cobs, biomass inputs like grasses. Diversifying the sources of production will mean that farmers and small businesses in areas like Asheville, North Carolina will play a role in developing these clean energies. While the growth in these industries have been advanced, challenges remain. Cellulosic ethanol producers face high capital investments with no guarantees of return. By addressing these barriers, small firms will be able to make large-scale productions a reality in the near future. It is critical that policies encourage the development of these new innovations to expand the sources of energy. This ranges from tax incentives, trade policies, to usage requirements and financial assistance. Our energy policy must not only work in the short term, but also the long-term energy security of our nation. Recognizing that obstacles of recognizing that obstacles to growth, the House recently passed the Energy and Tax Extending Act of 2008. This step was important because it includes a variety of renewable energy tax provisions. Specifically, it extends the biodiesel tax incentives for one year through December 31st, 2009. But perhaps more importantly, it provides a dollar per gallon incentive for all biodiesel. Though renewable fuels have grown exponentially over the past decade, we still make, it still makes up less than 1% of the current U.S. production. This hearing will provide us a better understanding of the current state of the next generation of renewable fuels industry and what it needs to grow. In the end, we need to do what it takes to ensure that small businesses in the areas will continue to have the resources that enables them to develop new fuels. I appreciate the witnesses here today uh, to talk about this important issue and I look forward to today's discussion.